It's been a long time since I made a proper video, so today I wanted to talk about the music I've been listening to. Um, keep in mind that these are only the songs that I listen to. Please don't be mad if I don't include your favorite song. 2023 has been an interesting year for music so far. I feel like I'm waiting for something to just really impress me. The way that Aurora did last year, but 2022 also had a lot of letdowns, like the Katie Tunstow album wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. Harry's house was Harry's house, and there was definitely some weird stuff that came out. So I'm on a journey of back catalogs. Nothing new excites me all that much, and I only have one concert lined up, we'll get to that in a bit, but fingers crossed more things are announced. I'm discovering so much new to me music, that's classic stuff, and I have a long list of bands to get into. I do album reviews on my Instagram, which will be linked in my link tree by the way, and I also have an AOTY page, and I don't have much interest in reviewing albums here, so I thought I would just do a roundup of some singles that I heard and liked, and I want to recommend them to you guys. There will be a playlist in the description, my 2023 play playlist, it is still growing, as every single week I listen to new songs and albums and add songs to the playlist. So, without further ado, I'm going to get straight into the tracks. Ditto by New Jeans. Not technically a 2023 song, but fuck it. New Jeans Global Domination, everybody. This is so cute and polished and is so refreshing from all the cluttered, noisy K-pop we get nowadays. Flowers, Miley Cyrus. Miley kicked off 2023 with releasing the lead single for her upcoming album, Endless Summer Vacation, Flowers. This is a really fun and bouncy disco track, which is about getting over a breakup. It doesn't hit nearly as hard as Midnight Sky, but I must say I am relieved this is a stable hit as opposed to the slow and boring chart year of 2022. I am hoping to see some exciting fresh blood on the Hot 100, though. Gossip by Monskin and Tom Morello. I haven't listened to Monskin's Rush, but this song features Tom Morello on guitar, and it is a very upbeat rock song that disses haters and is a very fun and satisfying to sing along to. Stamp On It by Got The Beat. Step Back was a big yikes moment, so I was worried for this, but hey, it's good. SM Maximus production is in full force here with a smackdown of an R&B and hip hop groove. The vocals are excellent, and while the lyrics are kind of lame, they are innocuous, unlike Step Back. That dubstep breakdown is so satisfying. One of Us, Ava Max. I have not listened to Diamonds and Dance Floors, but single One of Us impressed me by being a super polished and enjoyable piece of synth pop. Escapism, Ray. I still haven't heard the album, I know, I'm behind, but this is going to be hard to beat for best hit of the year. It took a lot to click for me, but damn, this hits hard. Ray's voice is very emotionally potent and great. The distorted dramatic strings create such a tense atmosphere. This song scratches the same itch that something like Habits Stay High did back in 2014, but this is actually good. More than good, actually. It is truly excellent. Lonely Bitch, B. Miller. B. Miller has been on my radar for a while with songs like Slud and featuring on KDA's The Baddest, but I am super excited for the yet-to-be-announced album if this is the lead single. Sure, it's not reinventing the wheel, but I would be lying if I didn't say this was probably my favorite song of the year so far. I love a good hard-hitting pop-punk track. It reminds me of Lottie Die by Nessa and Jaden, and also a bit of Maggie Lindman, but more polished. I haven't really pr appreciated B. Miller's voice until now, but this is great. Reason, Dreamcatcher. I like that this harkens back to an older style of Dreamcatcher from the You and I era, but why is the mixing so bad? Olander and Lee's usually hit it out of the park, but this guitar peaks in the mix so much that it hurts. I appreciate the gesture, but I'll just wait for the actual comeback. Yikes. Pressure, Aviva. With the amount of things Aviva releases, we are definitely getting volume three this year. This song has a very strongly orchestrated staccato sound. I could mistake this instrumental for an AJR song, but without some of the annoying trap sensibilities, thankfully Aviva sounds better than AJR, but this still strikes me as super cringy with the parents be like, what line? It's still fun though. Down by Aviva and Call Me Charisma. Call Me Charisma is an artist that was on my radar in the alt-pop sphere, and I did enjoy his song Dead Body last year. He does little to differentiate himself from the Mod Sun and Jadens of the world, but hey, he sounds like a real loser on this, and Aviva gets to take the high ground over a pretty sweet rock instrumental, so I'm all for this. Why Like You Love Me, Rosalia. Well, I do like the softer, more polished sound better than most of Momo Domani. Sorry, but that album never hit for me, but this spacey vocal performance and hand claps, that's where it's at. Sugar Rush Ride, TXT. I can't remember the last time I paid attention to TXT, but here we are. 
This is 100% an anti-drop chorus, but luckily I'm not sick of that yet. The verses are really solid also, and the whistling on the chorus is very catchy. This reminds me of an hypen, and that's good. Pray it away, Chloe. So cl the Chloe album is coming out very soon, two months before her sister Hallie will play Ariel in the new Little Mermaid, and she released a gospel-influenced song with lots of cussing and dissing on an ex in a classy way. Good. Heartbreak feels so good, Fall Out Boy. So the album is out this month, hell yes, and I love this. So, this is a good sign. It's upbeat, super catchy and energetic, and just fun, okay? I'm really pumped for this. Love from the other side, Fall Out Boy. This is the much more douchey sounding side of Fall Out Boy, and I am all here for it. This is one of the heaviest things they've released in, in a long time. Well, to be fair, they haven't released anything in a long time. That piano breakdown is epic as fuck. Can't tame her. Zara Larson. Zara Larson wore a buzzroom dress. WTF. Anyway, this is extremely solid synth pop, and I might check out the album, maybe. Trustfall, Pink. I have no interest in listening to a Pink album, as I never got her appeal to begin with, but this is a well-performed and produced song. I like it well enough, I will let it be radio filler. Waste My Life, Alice Merton. Sides was the best album of 2022, so I'm not sure why Alice is releasing something else so soon, but I'm here for it. It doesn't hit as hard as Vertigo, but it goes for something more fun and uplifting. And yes, this reminds me of Katie Tunstall, and yes, that's a good thing. Mantrum, Boy's World. Kudos to Boy's World for filling the Little Mix void. Sure, this song is messy, but it has the same energy of Little Mix's old songs, and I am here for it. Love Again, The Kid Leroy. The Kid Leroy made a good song besides Stay? Wow, impressive. Anyway, this is very 90s, so I like it. His new song is ass, though. Baby Lay Your Head Down, Allie and AJ. I feel like we are getting an Ali and AJ album soon, and this might be one of the best songs they have ever released. It has a warm, ethereal 90s vibe. That guitar solo at the end goes off hard. Shooting Star, XG. J-pop, K-pop, in Korea. Not really sure what XG is, but this is simultaneously their best and worst song. It is so catchy. They're absolutely doing something right here, but the beat is obnoxious and the rapping leaves something to be desired, but I kind of chalk that more up to the production. The chorus elevates it above mid for me, but this is still a mess. We go down together, Dove Cameron and Khalid. Okay, I really liked Boyfriend, Dove Cameron is cool, and this song has very pretty spacey production. Dove and Khalid sound great together, but this is literally just Lovely Part 2. I can't say it's better than Lovely right now, but it's pretty great to be honest. Green Honda. Benet. Benet is cool, and this song is cool. I'm not really sure how to describe this other than boss bitch material, and I'm here for it. Not sure why the Honda being green is significant, though. You Make Me Sick, Eshniko. Fuck yes, Eshniko album this year! She is one of my, the most interesting artists working right now, dare I say, and this song is no exception. It's abrasive as fuck with blown out bass, clicking gunshot noises, random guitar chords, and lots of screaming. I can't wait for the album. Thinking About You, Beck. Are we getting a Beck album this year? Between this and the Gorillaz feature, I really want to hear more. This is super sad, it's almost a country song, and it is great. Like a Savior, Ellie Goulding. Sure, this is good, but I'm not really sure if it makes me want to check out an entire album of this rehashed synth pop. As a one-off song, I like this though. Xena, Skrillex and Nybergudi. This song goes so hard, man. I heard both Skrillex albums and this was the best song from both of them. Each drop is unique and interesting. Skrillex does so much with Naya Bergotti's vocal melody, mixing it in so many ways. This is one of the most energetic songs of the year. The techno breakdown at the end is also great. Definitely check this out if you haven't. Crave. Paramore is, is a national treasure that we must protect at all costs. This is my favorite song and this is why. It has such a subtle, beautiful vibe. This album is great. Please check it out. Sweet Juice. Purple Kiss. I didn't know that a drippy sound effect and a song could work, but it does. It might be their weakest single yet outside of Ponzonia. Sorry, meme meme haters, that one is great. But Purple Kiss are yet to miss. Hey, that rhymed. Hiding Out in the Open by Feist. Okay, I know Feist released three songs, but I am waiting for the album to release in May before I listen to those other songs. So I just checked out the first single. After a six year hiatus, Feist is back, and this is great as expected. People who are into indie pop are really missing out if they haven't heard of Feist. This song has some cool vocoder effects and a spacey acoustic vibe. It's very, I'm very excited for Multitudes. After Hours, Allie and AJ. Okay, this feels very 90s and that's cool and all, but it didn't impress me like Baby Lay Your Head Down did. I still think we're in for a really solid album whenever that comes out. Missing No by Toriana. 
I didn't listen to the Toriana album yet, but for those who like super abrasive EDM, th here is the song for you. And the song for me, because this is pretty sick, and Toriana is a really underrated artist. The way she combines breakcore chiptune and techno into something truly batshit insane is just crazy. Cynical, B. Miller. This is just good for you again. I am still very excited for the album, and hey, this is, has heavier production than good for you, and B's lower register is great. Check this out. A&W, Lana Del Rey. I'm gonna listen to my first Lana Del Rey album when this drops. A&W convinced me. The incredibly layered and dark production is great. I've had a stick up my ass about Lana for too long. It's time to embrace my own whoredom and admit that she is great. Look at this, Dola. Dola is a Malaysian girl group, and yeah, this song is basically if Little Mix and Blackpink had a baby. The production is messy as fuck, but if you're into that, check it out, I guess. Bang Bang, Nessa Barrett. This ain't bad. Nothing will top Lottie Die, I fear. Killer by Key. Pretty sure Onu's album is coming out this month, and this is from Key's repackage. Taman will be back from the military this year also, so showels are getting fed. This is like Blinding Lights, but K-pop if you're into that, so yeah, check it out. Heart Wants What It Wants, BB Rexa. Okay, how did BB Rexa steal a song title from Selena Gomez and a vocal style and beat from Miley Cyrus and still make it a bop? BB is an enigma for real. Die For Me, Halsey. I don't know why Halsey decided to release this now, but I'm almost nostalgic for 2018. Almost, not quite. Never Enough, Aviva. Finally, an Aviva song I can fully get behind, no cats to drag it down, and no cringy orchestral shit. This is just a kick-ass rock song. Yes, please, more of this. Dive You Remix by The Weeknd and Ariana Grande. Ari and Abel are the best duo. Change my mind. I'm almost nostalgic for 2016. Almost. Not quite. Light and Darkness. Baby Metal. Baby Metal, but more melodic, and that's A-OK -okay because this is very enjoyable and still heavy. I will probably check out the album. I am obligated to talk about Baby Metal at this point because of the YouTube video that I made, which got like 4,000 views. <laughs> Break Shit by Tessa Tox. I'm not sure if I love or hate this, but the vocal section in the pre-course is great. Why does it remind me of Amy Lee? Anyway, not sure how I feel about the aggro rap vocals at the beginning. The chorus part reminds me of a Shniko, so that is, that is a win. I think I'm back around to liking it. Roller Coasters Make Me Sad by Imbehold. Imbehold debut record this year, please? Anyway, this sounds like a 2009 Ingram Michelson song, and that is a good thing. Between this and Driver's License, we're bringing back this era of pop, and it is concerning how old I am. Silent Running by Gorillaz. I'm talking about the 2023 single, but yeah, Cracker Island is good, shocker. But yeah, this laid back piano and synth production is great. It is very 80s, and this is one of my favorite vocal performances by Damon in a while. Give this album a fair shake. Worms by Shniko. Second Shniko single, and this one is much more laid back than You Make Me Sick, but still enjoyable. It's well produced and fun, and gives me high hopes for this album to be more consistent than Demi Devil. Still Alive by Demi Lovato for this new Scream soundtrack. Demi kicks ass. I don't want to watch horror movies, and I have no interest in the Scream franchise, but this song kicks hella ass. Thumbs up. I Wanted You to Fly, Elalee, and that's the translation from the Hebrew title. Um, Elalee is so talented, man. You may know her from that one talent show she was on doing Blackpink covers or that song that sounded like Hit by Mama Moo, but this is her, but her voice is actually incredible. I like seeing more artists from other countries like Israel and Malaysia, as we saw with Dala, taking K-pop influence. This is a ballad and it is so nice. Like It Like It by Secret Number. Speaking of K-pop, this is kind of crazy. It's so upbeat. I'm not really sure when I get the chance to breathe, but yeah, I like shit like this. It's no la da but we might have to settle for this since Everglow will never come back. WTF, you hua. Not a friend. Sorn. Ex-K-pop star Sorn decides to make a song straight out of the 90s with a blocky beat, layered vocals, fake strings, and exotic sounding samples. It fades out after two and a half minutes, though. To be a true 90s song, it should be at least four minutes. Red Ruby to Sleaze. Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj is a good rapper. This song has really good sample integration, and I think the Nicki album might be good whenever it finally comes out. I guess she can just join Cardi for the list of people who won't release albums. On the Street by J-Hope and J-Cole. J-Hope is going to the army, and he had to drop a song before he left. Here, he has a catchy, whistling 90s hip-hop beat and enlists J-Cole for a feature. Good stuff. Ring Catchers. Birdie. Holy shit, this is gorgeous. This makes me want to check out Birdie. I will 100% check out the album in July. 
This feels like a cross between Florence and Machine and Bjork, and I am totally here for it. This is an instance where the ethereal vocals can back up a dramatic string arrangement with poetic lyrics and a pulsating drum beat. So I guess I do have some things to be excited about, huh? Just this month, Miley, Fall Out Boy, Chloe, and Baby Metal, and later, Birdie, B. Miller, Dreamcatcher, and G-Idol's Inevitable Comebacks, Shiny and Tame and Comebacks, Ash Nico, Hopefully and Behold, Lana, Ali and AJ, and I know the smile is coming, there are so many hints and new material. It will either be a quick announcement or a surprise drop, and I am seeing them in July, so maybe 2023 is actually stacked. For more info on that, just wait until I rank every Tom York project. Cheers!